continue um, with Jibaralin. Uh, so you have looked at Oxin very, very extensively in the last week. So you learned about the, the function of, uh, no, actually you learned about the introduction to phytohormones, um, the classes of phytohormones, you got oxin, gibberellin, cytokine, FCC acid, acetylene, and um, predominantly oxin is like the star of all of these hormones. But not to say that other hormones are not important. So we're going to look at other hormones. Um, let's see where, whether we can finish the rest of the hormones or not this, uh, today. <coughs> So gibberellin, um, gibberellin, you, you, might, you might see that um, much of the nomenclature of the hormones ending with acid, right? Uh, yeah, they, they are acid, a type of acid. So gibberellin is actually the compound first identified under the class of this hormone. So the story was, it was found by a Japanese scientist, uh, Kurosawa, who found that some rice seedlings, they, they, they just grow excessively super speedy, resulting in, when, well, when you grow super speedy, the structure of the body is just not strong enough. You just tumble over, you just fall down, okay? and Kurosawa, they named this phenomenon as Bakane. Is it mentioned here? Or the, the slide before? Bakane, which means foolish seedlings. Yeah, why, why do you need to grow so fast? Now you, you, you are falling over because you're just not strong enough to support your own body weight. So this is actually due to the um, a fungus, actually, Gibberella fujikuroi. So that is where the name of um, Gibberellin came from. It's named after the fungus uh, that is producing this mycotoxin, causing the plants to grow excessively speedy. And in addition to that, um, secondary metabolite, you have to understand one thing. Um, just because gibberellin was the, the, the predominant story here, other secondary metabolites are also present, meaning that in, in this case, when it was first found, secondary metabolites um, su such as Fimonisin, Ficoxin, usually it's, it's ending with S-I-N, 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 causing the problems to become definite in the plants, eventually killing the seedlings, okay? So I think pretty much that the story of um, Darwin they do the testing, for the testing, remember the, ex the Darwin experiment? You've got your coleoptile, you've got your eye goblet, you absorb the, the signals from one coleoptile and then you move it the block to another using transparent, no, permeable block, permeable block, impermeable block and so on. Then they manage to um, isolate this compound, right? So where, where is it synthesized? Uh, in the apical portions of the stems and roots. Um, so does that mean the plant is not having gibberellin or so? No, it, it does have, yeah. But for some reason, some fungus make it furthermore. You know, you, sometimes you can have too, too much of good things and it can lead to a, actually a problem. Hmm. Think of holy water, zam zam. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? Try drink now, 20 liter in one go. What happened? 
Berapa pahala lebih? What happened to you? You drink you you drink holy zam zam water, one go twenty liter. Too much of a good thing. Some somebody died actually. Too much too much of water, brain swelling, cell bursting. Your cell do not have cell wall. If too much water get into your cell, it's going to. Okay, all right. So, the effects of gibberly not only in the form of elongating cells, but it's also uh, have some effects on seed germination. Okay, so how how can it differ from from auxin? So auxin that only involves in loosening the cell wall make the cell wall to elongate you know if I, initially it's very solid very firm then auxin through the action of acid hypothesis that you learned last week soften the cell wall and then the cell wall will elongate it is soft but gibberellin can actually cause um, cell division further cell division auxin does not cause cell division Plus, ox, uh, gibberellin can hasten seed germination. We'll see uh, how the mechanism is uh, going to look like. Pretty much like um, auxin, there are many members under gibberellin. Okay? And these members, uh, they, they don't really have specific name for gibberellin. They just denoted as gibberellic acid, one, two, three, and whatever number. I think 55 now. But most of the GA, gibberellic acid, that you are going to find in agriculture shop or use in the research is GA number three. Mostly studied, mostly used for commercial purpose. Okay. <clears throat> Do you still remember um, the some examples under oxin category what are example of oxin hormone there are natural there are synthetic natural what are example of natural oxin i a a stands for indole acetic acid what about synthetic IVA stands for indole butyric acid. Which one did you use for your experiment last week? IAA or IVA? IVA. Okay. How many concentration? Zero is not concentration, that's control. 25, 50, and 75. Right. Okay, role of gibberellin. So, promote cell elongation, pretty much like, like auxin, but it doesn't involve in the cell wall acidification just like the auxin. That's the difference, okay? It elongates. The way it causes elongation in cell, the uh, gibberellin acid, um, I think it just make the cell become detached. You see uh, plant cell, they are actually not freely roaming like that. No, they are actually connected. Okay. So cell one, cell two, cell three. So you see this thing in the middle? It's called middle lamella. And guess what? This component is mainly what's the name of thing? Calcium pectinate. And this is why plants need calcium. Without calcium, the cell walls are going to Detached from each other. There is no glue to, to, to hold them together. 
So uh, um, gibberally, rather than loosening or softening the cell wall of the plant, it, it, it actually involves in detaching the cell wall junction here. So when it has detached for a bit, there is room for elongation. Okay, so slight different from the auxin um, mechanism when it comes to cell elongation. Okay, so auxin induces cellular elongation alone. However, GA induces cellular division plus elongation. Remember your um, cell cycle lesson from your biology? What is it called? Cells is dividing the process. What is it called? Mitosis. Okay. Do you still remember the steps of mitosis? Yes. What is that? Mitosis. Uh huh. What is this? But you are dealing with plant cell. That should be another step. What is it? Cytokinesis. Cytokinesis. Good. However, this we reserve for next hormone, cytokinin. Uh, now you know why, why some, some hormones, they have specific functions. Okay, and <clears throat> the second uh, function of gibberellin is for the seed germination. You see, when you have the seeds, you know, you work with so many seeds before, right? Um, the bean seeds, the what? Corn seeds, what are seeds? Rice seeds. In the seed itself, in the embryo region, GA is present, but in the form of repressed form, non-activated form. Upon the imbibition of water into the seed, this will be activated. So the GA will cause some cascade of biochemical reaction, waking up the whole um, seed to germinate. So the mechanism is rather um, easy, actually. Let's see, do I have that? Um, oh yeah, I'll tell you in a bit how, how does it work. <coughs> um, but we look at this first. Again, to differentiate between auxin and gibberellin fruit formation. So in the auxin, you can have fruit formation without fertilization. What is it called? Partenocopy. You just have the flower, the female flower, spray with oxy, and eventually the ovule, the ovule will develop into a complete flower set without fertilization, meaning that the fruit is going to be seedless. So this is partenocopy. But the action for gibberellin in producing fruit, you, you still get your fruit, but it's not really patinocropic. It's just making the fruit to elongate the, the tissue of the fruit, meaning that the fertilization still needs to, to take place. So what happens is each fruit, like in the case of um, grape here, fruit came from flower, correct? So each flower has a flower stalk, rangkai bunga. So when you spray GA, GA3 usually, it will cause the flower stalk to elongate. When the flower stalk elongate, this will create more room for individual fruit to form. Plus, the moment the fruit, individual fruit is forming is as well, the tissue is going to elongate further, okay? So this is why you get this seedless Thompson grape, regular seed fruit formation and Thompson seedless, All right? So both auxin and GA, you, 
you get your um, seed list. You can get your seed list, but can it happen both? Yes. Um, Oxine and gibberellin somehow can, can make it. This can have the, um, sometimes seed list as well. Yeah. Meaning that patinocopy happen and then GA take action on it. Make it further bigger and bigger. However, some varieties just do not have seeds. Um, like our, you know, banana. But actually, you can still the, the remnant of the seed, actually. Underdeveloped seeds. You eat your banana. Nah, right in the middle, you see something black. But it's not, it's not very solid. It's not even gritty. Yeah, that is actually um, the remnants of unfertilized underdeveloped seeds but if you eat a wild banana yeah you'll get the actual seeds um, in the banana yeah so this is the story i was telling about earlier about the uh, wakening up of the seed germination which you will do on this wednesday in your seed there's already some amount of um, ga Okay, um, I'll use this. So upon the imbibition of water, this GA will be mobilized to the, what's this? Endosperm, the food reserve inside the seed. So when this happened, food reserve in the seed is in the form, what we call as complex form, complex sugar form. So GA, it moves here, another thing will happen. An enzyme called, called alpha amylase will be activated. So if you learn your biology, this is something that you have in your body as well, in your, in your mouth now. You got your amylase. What's the function of amylase? Break down starch, right, into simple sugar. So the activated amylase, originally repressed when the seed is dormant, is sleeping, will cause this complex sugar, which is the starch, to be broken down into simpler form. So this simple sugar can now be utilized by the embryo as a source of energy to germinate the plumule and the radical. Okay? So the biochemical pathway is actually very long, but that is the idea of it. Okay. Why some enzymes need to stay asleep as well. Imagine if this alpha amylase is not sleeping. It will break down the food reserve. There's no food anymore for the embryo to, to feed on. And not only that, once it is broken, It'll start, what, what happened to sugar if you just leave it for too long? Outside, it will start to? <laughs> or what ants is going to get into the seed? It will, it will start to oxidize, it will start to oxidize, it will, um, you know, forming something else because sugar is very sticky. It will combine with something else. Okay? Right. And gibberellin, since the, the function is elongating, it can trigger flowering as well. So that is the third function of gibberellin. But this is only special for certain plants only, especially plants that can form bolting. You see some plants, the, the formation of the leaf, we call it rosette, like this. So, rosette. So the flower, when it comes out, it's going to create like a tower going up here. So this phenomenon, the elongation of flower stalk going upward, we call it bolting. The good example 
is from the Brassica family. Um, Eucrisifrous vegetable, broccoli, um, cabbage, yeah. So many, so many, so many example. Um, aloe vera, aloe vera, yeah, aloe vera. So you have this um, molting here, and then you got your flower, okay? So because of this, um, farmers can actually control the flowering of the, the timing of the flowering for the crops. When it's not ready, don't make it happen. But if they want to make it happen, they can spray. <coughs> Alright, okay, that's all about gibberellin. Now let's look at cytokinin. Any questions about gibberellin before we jump into cytokinin? Naja? Ha, ah, cytokinin. Reminds you of what when you look at this word? Cytokinesis. What is cytokinesis? Sapu pisakan sel. Yeah, lah. What happened? What happened? Itu Taiwan dulu. Uh, ah, cell plate. Cleavage furrow. Cleavage furrow tu untuk sel haiwan. Tahu tak cleavage furrow? I don't know what is it Malay. Um, so you have your cell about to divide. Ni. So this is the cleavage furrow. Ah. Uh. But for the plant cell, something else will happen. Uh, cell plate. Guess what? Cell plate is actually this thing. Midolamella, calcium pectinate. Uh, now you know the cell plate is actually the deposition of calcium to form calcium pectinate so that two cells, two plant cells, glued to each other. Sticking to each other. Think of it like your gum uhu. Okay. Going on. Look at the cytokinins. Again, the name of a hormone class. There are many members. But this time, it comes back to the difficult way of nomenclature. It's not like GA. GA, just one, two, three, right? This has got so many names. Okay, you got zetin, cytokinin, kinetin, and so on. So usually it ends with I-N, 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 T-I-N, and so on. Oh, that's a long history. Anybody want to read? Um, I think it was first discovered when people were doing uh, tissue culture. Yeah. So, you know tissue culture? Some of you might be interested to learn about micropropagation. Who should we offer here? So in your... Second or third year, you can take that. Micropropagation, so you will have hands-on experience working in the tissue lab. And not tissue lab, tissue culture lab. So in the concept of tissue culture, you have like a container, a flask. And this flask, you put in a nutrient medium. So you have your flask here. Oh, it's buro. Uh -huh. And then you have your nutrient medium here. So this can some most of the time it's a solid, but it can be liquid as well. But let's take solid for now. So this is called nut nutrient medium. So all the nutrient needed. Essential nutrient, essential nutrient plus PGR, plant growth hormones. Okay. So this nutrient medium, popularly, there are many recipes, okay? so many recipes, but 
the most common recipe is the MS recipe. MS stands for Murashige and Scooge. I think there is an E. MS medium. What, what was in that uh, recipe? Well, you learn it when you take uh, micropropagation. Basically, all the salts, um, you know, sodium phosphate, ammonium nitrate, uh, and then all the trace elements, and then they put in um, some um, hormone in it. So, yeah, squish. Oh, there's no E. Yeah. So, um, they found out that when you play around with some concentration of auxin and this cytokinin, the tissue, which is in it, this is close, okay? This is close. And it can be close for many years. There is a mess of tissue here. Okay? Undifferentiated. When it's undifferentiated, we call it callus undifferentiated tissue so this tissue here undifferentiated when you play around with two hormone concentration namely auxin and cytokinin you can actually decide whether the callus is going to form root or shoot so you have your callus by playing around with auxin or cytokinin you can determine or decide this to form root or shoot. So this is actually very useful in tissue culture for the reason it can create many, many small plantlet. That's why it's called micropropagation. You propagate the small, small plants, small seedlings in the flask. So one flask can give rise to maybe hundreds of plants. Just a small flask. Is it suitable for all plants? No. Why not? Theoretically suitable for all plants, but not practical. So we use it for difficult to propagate plants, usually like orchid. Uh, you know, okay? Why? Why? Why orchid needs to use tissue culture? What's that? Some kind of organism that helps. Uh, orchid seeds. Remember, have have you learned that orchid? What 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 is with orchid seeds? Uh, very small. Very small. Smallest. So what's what 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 is wrong with being super small? You have your orchid seeds. Actually, that's more than that. It's just like dust. No endosperm. Just embryo. When you are too small and you do not have embryo uh, endosperm, how the embryo is going to get food? You see the problem now? So in nature, orchid seed is always associated with special fungus to help it to get food from surrounding. But this is the problem. One species of orchid can only be associated with one specific fungus species. It cannot just be any fungus. It, it doesn't work. Suddenly, if you put tempeh next to it, that tempeh fungus is going to help your orchid to germinate. No. Too specific. Very problematic. So, due to, you know, Nature probability and stuff, sometimes it will happen. Right fungus, right species of orchid, then germination happens. In the tissue culture lab, you don't have to worry about fungus, whether it's present or not. You have your 
nutrient agar, agar medium. You have your seed. The nutrient is right next to the seeds. It can diffuse easily with even without the presence of fungus, mycorrhiza, and hyphae to absorb the nutrients. Okay, so this has enabled micropropagation has enabled the proliferation of so many orchid species that was not possible before this. Okay, before this, you need to rely on the fungus. The fungus is not there. No, no, no baby orchids produced. No, you don't have to worry. Just put the orchid seeds in the neutral medium. Simple as that, right? <coughs> okay, so pretty much that's the function. Um, so cell division, you know, morphogenesis, you know, you just play around with the auxin and cytokinin uh, uh, ratio, lateral bud formation, and also the DNS method we're going to look at. That. Yeah, so the formation of root or shoot from a callus here, this process is called organogenesis, this word. Organo, organ. Genesis, the formation or re the birth of. So many things can you learn about genesis? If you go to Department of Soil Science, you learn about soil genesis, how soil is formed. Have you looked your soil science? Yes. Yeah. Where soil came from? From from a hybrium. Plant. Plant. Where soil came from? Rock. How? Herb, 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 herb. Weathering, lulu, how So what, what happened to the rock? You have one big rock. Bam. How to get to that small, that, that soil? How? Weathering, uh, process lulu, how You have one big chunk of rock. Then there are many weathering agents. Did you learn this? Yes. Give me some weathering agents. Wind, rain, temperature, air, acid, yeah, angin, yeah, pressure, earthquake, so many. So this one big chunk of rock or bad rock, you learn it, or regolith. Have you found that word? Regolith, uh, go go do the go do the revision. I'm not teaching you soil science. <coughs> Weathering process is going to break down this big rock, not break down, break up. Wrong phrasal verb. Into smaller pieces. This pieces becoming smaller pieces, becoming even smaller, even smaller, even smaller, even smaller, until you get your clay, until you get your sand, until you get your Silt. So that's why in when you learn about your soil texture grading, there is a size. Among silt, sand, clay, who's the biggest? Sand. Who's the smallest? Clay. You see? Meaning that who came first? Sand or clay? Sand. Yeah. Further weathering can eventually turn it into clay, right? So it's all about the breaking apart into smaller pieces to form the soil. Okay, so that is soil genesis. For for organ genesis, no, no, no breaking apart. We are building things. So for organogenesis, um, two two organs important at the beginning of seedling life, root. And shoot. When you have high cytokinin, it favors shoot formation. When you have high auxin, it favors root formation. Oh, I found it on the internet some some time ago. Uh, you can read this kemudian, okay? This is this is to help you with with um uh for 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 the summary. 
I want you to look at this. So you've got two axes. The horizontal axis is the um, oxygen concentration. The vertical axis is the cytokinin concentration. So you can see that when oxygen and cytokinin pretty much in the same power concentration, it stays in the form of callus. But when one is higher than the other, like this one, you have more oxygen. This is when you get your root. But when you go to this side, where you get more of cytokinin, you get shoots. So this is very interesting because now you can decide whether the plant should have certain organs because maybe you use micropropagation not to propagate plant but you want to harvest active compound you know there are many herbs in tropical country like Malaysia right maybe some of the active compound is present in the shoot the young shoot so you use micropropagation technique to trigger callus just to form the shoots because you want to harvest the shoot and to extract the comp components out without actually growing the plants outside. So you can do this over and over and over again in a very space limited area, but it's very productive. So the same story for the root, maybe some plants, the active compounds are actually present in the root. You don't want to shoot. Because we are, we are talking about business now. We want the organs of interest. So do not grow shoots. Increase the oxygen concentration so that more roots coming out, you can harvest the active compound from the roots. Okay, something like that. Right. Can you give me one example of herbs plant that you know the active compound is in the shoot? What? Yeah. So rosemary, that, that is for the essential oil. Um, Kacik Fatima, you know, all the um, plants. Ginseng, nama pun ginseng. Root. I'm talking about shoot. So root is ginseng. But the question is, is, is there any, you know, when, when the root is too young, sometimes the, the compound is not present because um, it needs to live for a bit longer to absorb all the nutrients, you know, to turn it. Because let's face it, the genome of a plant is actually a cooking recipe book. You use plant to produce sugar. You use plant to produce vitamins because plants have the recipe to, do all, to make all of these components, all of these ingredients that you cannot do. You can do, but it's super expensive. Okay, maybe, maybe actually some components still cannot, cannot be done artificially. Like what? Can you make chlorophyll? Still, you need to, to, to get it from plants, right? Hmm. There's all this limitation to how much technology can do. Okay, yeah. So, because of the trigger in cytokinesis, cytokinesis, cytokinin can actually be used to delay senescence, not to stop, to delay senescence. Okay, so senescence is actually is a process of becoming old. Is it no? Wait, is that the correct definition of it? Hmm, let me see. What is actually senescence? Actually, senescence happens because of the accumulation of wrong proteins. Remember, uh, two weeks ago, you learned about um, autophagy in, in the special lecture. S some organelles in the, in the cells, including your cell in your body, over the time, they are going to malfunction. They due to the wear and tear. 
So when they be malfunction, they cannot do the job very well like what they used to. So over the time, if you just leave this malfunction structure in the cell, it will not produce the needed things, but rather creating problems. So there is actually in biology, the terminologies of zombie cell. So these zombie cells have so much of malfunction components in its body. Due to what? Due to aging, because it's old. It has done so many work. Think of, think of it like your car. First year of buying your car, super fast, everything works smoothly, light so bright, you know, engine start very, very smoothly, and so on. But what happened 20 years later? The same car. <laughs> it's, 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 it's just not as smoothly, as, as efficient as it was 20 years ago, right? You still have the structure, but it's kind of malfunctioning. So this thing in cell, we call it zombie cell. So the malfunctioning is one thing. These zombie cells releasing inflammatory substance. Okay, maybe this can be your assignment. I want to know what is the name of the substance. This is a special substance. It being released by zombie cells, by the aging cells. And these create problems to the plant. One places infected other places and eventually the whole plant becoming old. Look at this. This is actually the same leaf, but they are just dying down, becoming brown, necrosis, chlorosis, and so on, tissue death. But when you spray cytokine, you are actually triggering this mitosis to go on. So active cells, newly divided cells, pretty much like you are buying a new car. Can it still function? Yeah, it can still function, just like the, the new one. So don't care about, about the old one, but eventually, that's why the word is delay. Eventually, it will become this as well. Why? Because there are so much zombie cells releasing inflammatory substances. Now it's just too much. Unless you flush out these substances, this is what the study of senescence is actually doing. Number one, clear out all these zombie cells. So this process of clearing out, using a substance, we call it senolytic. Senolytic. From the word senescence, you use substance to remove senescent cells. Why? Number one, senescent cell is malfunctioning. Number two, they are releasing inflammatory substances. When you have less and less zombie senescent cells in the body, you or that plant as an organism can function better for longer. So that's the old idea. Okay? So what happens if you consume this synolytic substance? What happened to you? Theoretically, you, you stay young forever. Not only appearance, okay, I'm not talking about appearance, I'm talking about your physiological function, bio, biochemical function as you. Imagine you are 80 years old, your, your grandchildren like the whole village, but you're still able to play ping pong and my soul sorrow. You just have the energy. Yeah. Because you manage to do all this synolytic activity on a regular basis. Do you know that substance? Do you want it? Do you want to know that substance? What? It's true. Actually, some 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 scientists are actually studying this. 
currently when you, when you eat this, you can actually reverse your biological clock. I'll give you one substance. There are many substance actually. I'll give you one substance. It's called, um, that's a two word actually. Fisetine. Apigenin. So these two things are actually naturally present in plants. Some plants actually have this. Celery, for example. Celery, um, apples. Not the red apple, the green apple. Yeah, parsley. You know, so all these herbs, when you eat it, that's why you see that um, some um, old people, they like to, to eat all this plant stuff, right? They, they, they are old, but they are strong. They don't go to hospital, they're just good. Because they, they, they are consuming all of these compounds that naturally present in the plant. So, unknowingly, they are triggering synolytic activity in the cell, purging out all the senescent zombie cells. Nothing going to happen if, if the grandma eating cytokinin. So for human, different substance, okay? Right. Do you think this has impact on agriculture? Having delayed senescence for plants? Meaning that you can harvest your plant for longer without having to replant and regrow because when you replanting, you need to prepare your land, you need to do all the things all over again, costing. We're talking about costing, we're talking about the labor, we're talking about the timing, right? But when the same plants can go on to produce organs of interest because of delayed senescence, it's going to be very economic and profitable, okay? They're just prolific, right? Think of it like chicken, layers, layers chicken. What's that, Emily? There's a two, broilers and layers. Layers is uh, chickens that lay eggs. You know, chicken, there are two breeds. One is meant for the meat, that's called broilers. Another one is meant for eggs. So egg chicken, after, after they produce the egg for the first time, can the chicken just stop producing egg? It can produce more and more, right? until the age of 80 weeks. Yeah, so that's why eggs industry is very profitable. You don't have to change the chicken with a new set to get new batch of eggs. The same chicken can produce eggs one cycle after another, up to 80 weeks. Then of course it's going to die. Not die, actually it will be sold as old, old chicken. Yeah, and some people is actually studying this synolytic to be applied to the chicken. Maybe 80 weeks can be increased to 120 weeks. So this extra 40 weeks can actually create more money. Yeah. But of course, this is a big controversy, you know, GMO and stuff. Sometimes you don't have to use GMO. You can use uh, the compounds. If I were the... Um, chicken farmers, I'll feed the chicken with parsley and celery. So much physetin and epigenic. You make your chicken anti-aging. Young chicken. Yeah. Independent uh, girl chicken, no need the rooster. Can produce eggs non-stop. Maybe that's a form of patinocopy in, in, in animal. You know, patinocopy in, in, in uh, oxen, you got your fruits, right? Patinocopy in chicken, you got your eggs without rooster. Okay, right. Oh, okay. So cytokinin, just like any other hormones, they have two modes of um, action, meaning that they comes into mechanism due to the regulation by two things. Number one is the intrinsic regulators. Intrinsic regulators means something embedded in the genes, the genome. Okay, 
So all the names that you see here, all the small names, this is actually the name of a protein which was encoded by a specific gene. Okay? And cytokinin is also um, response, have response on the environmental changes. This is what you learned two weeks ago in the special lecture, the abiotic stresses. So when something happened, for example, too much light or there's um, so much uh, drought happening, some hormone can actually get triggered and be produced to cause various events on the plants. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Yay. So that's all for cytokinin. Any question? What time now? I don't have my watch. Is that correct, the watch? Hmm. Can still absorb? Cannot absorb anymore? How, how, how many hormones left? Two. Hmm. Anybody want to teach? This guy is there. This exercise, it caused me so many problems when I was doing my job. Okay. Alright, I think we can continue just for a bit. So, ABA, f cytic acid. Remember last week, Yon, when you learned about hormones, there are two functions of hormone. It can either stimulate to or to induce, or it can inhibit or to repress. Stop from happening. Now we have entered the repression. yeah repression section of the phytohormone to inhibit. Okay, um, there are many forms of FSC acid as well, but usually we deal with ABA. Okay, <clears throat> um, the compound actually that's a name here. Yes, this is a name from this the name of this compound, abscisin. Yeah. So interestingly, abscisic acid actually comes from precursor of uh, vitamin A, carotenoids. You know, carotenoids. Carotenoids is the one that you have in your the form of vitamin A, but due to the special molecular change by um, chemical ring and stuff, now you get a, a hormone. Okay. So a vitamin could be a hormone. It's just about the concept, the function. So it, ABA acts as a growth inhibitor and also um, repressor for both growth and also metabolism, meaning that it can inhibit the physical growth of the plant, something that you can see, and also the repressors physiologically inside the plant that you cannot see. It can do both, right? One thing uh, which I think I mentioned this um, in the special lecture two weeks ago about the stomata. Stomata, the closure of the stomata. So stomata on the surface of the leaf, they need to close and open accordingly. They cannot just open all the time or close all the time. Why? Why stomata are important? What are the functions of stomata? Allow, yes, exchange. What are the gases? Carbon dioxide, oxygen, water vapor. Water, but in the form of gas, we call it water vapor. Okay, so when stomata closed, CO2 cannot get in. Oxygen cannot go out, but the good thing is the water in the plant is preserved, so the plant is not wilting. Yeah, when stomata are open, oxygen can go out, CO two can get in, the plants can photosynthesize. So that's that. So there, there, there is a need to balance it out. Okay, so that's why stomata. That's why they they term it mouth. You open and close all the time. Imagine your mouth, you open all the time. Try it out. One day. Don't close. Challenge. Open. Tutup sendiri. Why? 
you can use that that uh, boxer uh, mouth guard to to keep it open. Okay, so um, the function here. <coughs> Look at this. It is actually a response to stress, something that you learn in the special lecture. It's a stress signal. Usually you don't have ABA so much, but when something happens to the plant, ABA will be lots and lots in abundance. Okay. So these are the things that, um, that the ABA is responsible for. So for the stress signaling, for the both biotic and abiotic stress, you learn so much over here, okay? but we didn't learn so much about here. And then for the growth development, growth development in all stages of the plant, from the seed to the flower, all. Remember, you need a stop somehow, sometime. You cannot just go all the time, okay? Imagine if you don't sleep. Can you, can you, can you not sleep? Why do you need to sleep? Rest. Just rest. Just rest. <laughs> if, 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 if that is all that you need, just rest. But don't sleep. Don't sleep. Why the action of sleep, being unconscious, is needed? Why? When you are resting, your brain is not thinking. Just think white, blank. You know why? Why the, the, the action of sleep is needed? If resting and not thinking is all that you need and not moving. Just just stay just stay resting, close your eyes. That's all. Why not sleeping? What did that Active. Active? You you're already not moving. <laughs> Actually, this is one of the questions young scientists still not properly managed to answer. What? <laughs> uh, not, and not entirely understood why sleep is needed. One, one, one of the best explanation is because you need to um, what's the word? detoxify your brain. You, you see, throughout the day, your brain is working. It's like a super busy machine, okay? Imagine 20% of your energy is just being used by your brain. Your brain is like how many percent of your body? Maybe 2% of the weight of your body? But it's consuming 20% of your en entire energy. So it's a super hungry machine. So like all machines, it's producing what waste product. Yeah, look at your car. Does it have a waste product? What? What's up now? What's up? What else? Your your car need an oil change, right? Minyak hitam. Yeah. That oil, after some time, well, it, it become white. It's it's not it's not it's not so, uh, liquid anymore. It's actually becoming solid. Oxidized oil cannot be used anymore. So that actually what happens to your brain after you have been using it throughout the day. It just accumulate all this gunk. I don't know what gunk in Malay. You know gunk. Gunk. Ah, cari lah maksud dia. Gunk. Dia macam dia macam sampah masyarakat macam tu. <laughs> yeah, kind of like waste. Yeah. Yeah, dia macam sticky dia tak nak pergi macam samp macam some waste it can just go without you know. Dia macam it just stay around. It is a waste but it just stay around. Something needs to be done about it. That's why you need to sleep. 
Yeah, so that your brain, you see there is a water pipe in, your, in the back of your head. This water pipe will flush out all of this gum out of your lymphatic system. You have two major circulation system in your body. One is blood circulation system. Another one is lymphatic system. That's not blood, okay? Lymphatic system is different. It's a different points in your body. So all this gunk will be flushed out during your sleep. Yeah, that's why you need to sleep properly, uninterrupted sleep. Yeah, and then when you wake up, you feel fresh because where's the gunk? Ah, where is the gunk now? What is organ to process all the waste? Your liver, your kidney. Then when you wake up, you feel refreshed. Uh, then can be the gill again for the next day. Kalau kau tak tidur, tu esok dah tak ada gill lah. Okay, so so that's um, uh, coming back to ABA. So various function, okay? Uh, it needs. Do plant sleep? No. Mm. I like to ask that question actually before. Do plant sleep? Okay, two, two, two things, okay, uh, happening for ABA involvement in plant development and stress tolerance. So for, uh, for this side, you, you're dealing with the seed germination, stomata. Remember seed germination just now? What was the hormone responsible? GA. You see, GA and ADA, they kind of antagonistic effect. One higher, the other one will be lower. Kind of like auxin and cytokinin. There is a pairing. Auxin pairing with cytokinin, the action. One high, the other lower, something will happen. For ABA, the pairing is with gibberellin when it comes to seed germination. Seeds are dormant, seeds are sleeping because of the accumulation of ADA in the seeds. So that's why in the um, desert, after a brief shower of rain, suddenly so much plant, so much flower. But it's just a, a short, short bout of rain. How, how come suddenly everything waking up? Because ABA has been washed away. Yeah, so that's the function of rain in nature to wash away ABA, to dilute ABA so that water imbibition can get into the seeds and now GA concentration higher, triggering seed germination and so on. Okay, right. Okay, and there are many um, uh, stresses that can trigger ABA signaling, okay? Yeah, UV, heat, uh, drought, heavy metal, and so on. Okay, this is uh, something that I mentioned before. So, with um, about the stomatal opening and closing. Yeah. Ha, one more. Yay. Ethylene. Macam asyik aku je cerita kan. Kau tak nak cerita tu. Ethylene. This is the only hormone in the form of gas. Gas. Okay. Meaning that the good thing is, if you want to get one ethylene from another to another plant, you just make them stay together in a closed container. Yeah. You have a banana and unripened fruit. Apple ke apple ke. Put it in the Tupperware. Close it. Yeah. That unripened fruit will ripe. But, <coughs> but not all fruits can ripen after it has been taken from the plant, okay? So, so that's actually, I think it's also um, considered inhibitor. You know why fruit ripen? The action of ripening, what, what's actually happening? That actually uh, softening of the tissue. Yeah, it stops the growth and it softens the tissue. Look at your fruit, your mango. When, when it's still not ripened, it's hard, right? 
once it has ripened, when you press it, hmm, it, it tastes it tastes tasty. Yeah. So functions of uh uh ethylene, fruit ripening, you know that, apinasty, now conversion. Oh, um, maybe we'll learn about that later. Encourages senescence and abscission. Look at this. So it has the opposite function of cytokinin. Because this one promotes senescence and abscission. Senesc abscission is the falling of the leaf. You see your leaf got a stalk, right? Tangkai daun, attached to the mother plant. So the, the attachment junction, there is a special cell in that. It's called abscission layer. When ethylene is present, these cells in this tissue will actually die and eventually it will detach. That's why leaves fall. Because there is a special layer there. It's called abscission layer, special tissue there. It's not because of there's a gum, no. So this 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 uh abscission layer is very actually not not it's not bad altogether. Without abscission of the leaf, you do not get autumn. Right. Yeah. So flowering, actually inhibit flowering in most species, but it can promote in certain plants. So the function of flowering depends on the species. Sometimes it repress, sometimes it promotes. So the good example for this is ethylene used in pineapple industry. Okay, so the, the special ethylene form is called ethaphone. Ethaphone. I'm not sure how to spell it actually. I think or oh, Anyway, you can buy it from Shopee. It's a pond. Ethylene that can be prepared in solution. You learn ethylene is a gaseous form, right? This ethylene, you can prepare it in solution, then you spray it to your plant. People use it in pineapple industry. You see pineapple without ethapon application, it will only flower after at least three years. Oh, that's super long. So farmers, they use ethapon and then they spray to the plant. The plant will flower after about nine months. So they save two years just by applying this. Right? But don't spray to your friends. You don't want your friend to flower. What happens if you spray your friend with ethapon? Pipi makan lembut. Well, you can try that, 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 that hypothesis, okay? So, and then sex expression, cucumber buds treated with ethylene become carpalate. So, ethylene can also trigger the sex. You know, some plants, they can change the sex according to the environment or according to the chemical imbalances, okay? So, ethylene can do this to the cucumber as well, right? Um, not many plants can do this. I know some orchids can do this. You know, some orchids, um, when, you, when it receives so much light, it, it becomes female. Less light becomes male. Yeah. So the sex change, uh, not only operation, just environmental signal. It's not permanent. It's not permanent. It's only on special circumstances because the whole idea is to to have that species continuum. So the plants will do whatever it takes so that the babies can be produced and the species is not dead or end with, with it. Anything, okay? <sighs> right. Um, I actually forgot to include um, something in this ethylene. I'll, I'll give you later. Yeah. So this is what I was talking about, the fruits. Uh, fruits that can ripen on the tree only and fruit that can ripen after it has been detached from the tree. It's called climatric fruit and non-climatric fruit. So what is that? So climatric fruits are fruits like banana. Um, after you have taken from the mother plant, it can continue to ripen. 
So non-climatory fruit, once you have plucked from the mother tree, it, 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 it's, it's not further ripening. That is the stage that you're going to get, right? But of course, when you spray something in the supermarket, you can trigger the ripening further. Like what? Do you know any substance that can trigger fruit ripening? No? No? People in the... Uh, um, farmers, they use this. Um, pernah dengar? Car carbide. 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 Uh, carbide. People use carbide um, to, to ripen banana. C-A-R-B-I-D-E. Bahasa Melayu apa? Carbide apa? K-A-R-B-A-I-D. Yeah. So this is the stages of fruit ripening. I, I think I, I missed I miss one, one slide. Uh, I'll, I'll give it to you later. About, about, about auxin. Okay. All right. Okay. I think that's all. Uh, this is for special assignment later. Different classes of hormones. Don't need to worry about this later. Huh? But there are other classes of hormones like breast, you know, steroids, your willow water. That's a special classes of hormones. Oh no, plant signaling. Sorry. Yeah. That that we're going to um, look at in next week. I think. Yeah. Regular time. Okay. Don't worry about this. Okay, I think that's all for main classes of hormone. What are they? Oxin, Gibberellin, Cetokini, Acid, Ethylene, five. Okay, so other, other classes uh, we'll look at um, later. So, all right, okay, uh, I think that's all for today. Yay. <coughs> So we'll do the GA experiment um, on Wednesday. And that would be your last experiment, I think, on your practical book. Mana dah? Pasal, pasal, apa ni? Instrument, demonstration. I finish it early so that you can do for revision banyak masa. Betul-betul-betul. Betul degil juga. Okay, all right. Um, did you, have you have you applied treatment for your flowering? Yes. Okay. Have you transferred the cutting? Yes. Have you watered the cutting? Yes. Ah, biasa. Kau tak water macam mana pokok tu nak tunggu? Eh, tak apa, tak apa. Kita tengok je siapa jadi, siapa tak jadi. No, you, you think about it. This is all about attitude. Attitude. Dalam kumpulan... Walaupun dalam kumpulan, whether who's going to be serious about about the task or otherwise, I'm I'm not going to 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 remind so many times. You 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 are an adult now. You can actually create your own babies now. Okay, all right. Okay, I think that's all for today. So I'll see you. I'm, oh, any question? Any question? Any question? <laughs> so all plants are the ethylene because it's ethylene predominantly for fruit ripening but it's always present in small amount because without ethylene senescence is not happening as well so some leaves over the time even though it's still growing, some leaves you can see actually yellowing, browning. That's the action of ethylene. Yeah. So you still have ethylene, even though the plant is still not completely dead, but in minute amount, because some hormone is dominating. What is it? Some antagonistic of ethylene. Kenapa eksesi asid? Eksesi asid dengan ethylene dua-dua, inhibiting. Satu kini lah. Ya, yeah, satu kini. Itu satu kini dengan oksi, tengok. Gibberellin. 
Tak sampai tiga minit. Mana tak slide tu? Is it in here? Oh, I know, I know, I know. Oh, ke tak? Tak letak. Ke tertinggal lagi? No, I'll just open this. Ah. Uh. So, um, GA with abscessic acid. Ethylene with Saya tu kini, ya. Ha 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 confuse 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 confuse. Work out the the pairing now. Some some dia macam ni, bukan bukan all it, the, there is a definite pairing or coupling. But that is the domain predominantly what is happening to the plant. Okay? So oxine and cytokinin even though both is promoting stimulating but the higher ratio will win they are not antagonistic Ox oxine and cytokine yeah however abscisic acid and gibberellin they are antagonistic okay when one is high the other will shut up okay and so on all right just just that is the concept okay all right okay okay i think that's all so i'll see you on wednesday all right